I'm talking relationships Worth more than money No time for the fake or the phony Tweezy jump the gym It's so evident Link up with the gang I'm talking relationships Worth more than money Uh oh Oh <laughs> man Uh oh <laughs> Oh, oh, man. Oh, man. Listen, man, um, before we get started, I'm just going to play something. Y'all ain't going to hear it, but if you go to the actual Apple Podcast, Spotify Podcast, all of the podcast platforms out there, y'all got the exclusive. Some more though. Hold on, hold on. Cause this one is the one. You remember this? I do, man. This is a classic. We made this shit like years ago. About two, three years ago. tuned in to relationships worth more than money podcast i am tweezy Sh- kennedy yeah, to man. my left it's your boy esquire man yes sir yeah, man. my bro yeah you know it. we go back we go back man um man we just gonna kick it man because for real for real man we we've been doing this music thing for a long time man yep. a long time yep. But, man, for the people that don't know, man, just give them a background, like, you know what I'm saying, uh, of where you from and, and how you started this whole producer, engineer thing, songwriting, yeah. artistry. Yo, man, I'm from Alabama, um, Daphne, Alabama. It's about 15, 20 minutes away from Mobile. Um, started doing music about, shit, about 20 years ago now, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, only reason I got into production is because, as an artist, I couldn't find a production that, you know what I mean, fit me. Right, you right, know right. What I'm saying? So. Um, once I tapped into that, that was it. Uh, like that, I was hooked. You know, what yeah. I mean? to make my first beat, which was like twenty minutes long. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. I didn't know how to map everything out, and, and having everybody talk shit. Like, man, you you got like eighteen thousand songs in this one, man. Like, learn how to break it up. You yeah. know what I mean? Had had a mentor teaching me that, and shit. Fast forward now, man, and you know, we done, yeah. some, we done some things, man. What What was your first dog, bro? Reason. Reason? Reason? Reason was the was first, first one? Though. Yo, I'm letting y'all know now. <laughs> Before I met this dude, I couldn't stand Reason. Yeah. Just for the simple fact that you had to literally plug and play, like if you was an engineer, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, and that joint, bro, like used to re- like wreck my nerves, bro. Like I was so nerve-wrecking that like I was just like, bro, I would never touch this shit again. Never touch this dog again. Yeah. And then, boom, here come S using Reason. What what was that? Reason 10 we was Reason on at 10. the time? Yep. And when I seen the workflow, I'm like, oh, this joint hard. Yep. Out. Instantly went and got Reason because yep. I already <laughs> had it because I had won it from a, yep. uh, a beat won competition. competition. Yep. yep. I had won it from a beat competition. I just went back, checked my emails. Shout out to uh, iStandard. Um, iStandard was the one that uh, sent that Reason to me get probably like 2018, I think. Yep. And um, yeah, bro, jumped in reason, and we was cooking up every day, man. Every day, dog. At least every day, ten to, ten to fifteen beats a day, T- bro. And it was so. crazy, bro. And then we were we were always bounce ideas, bro. Mm-hmm. We'd be in two different rooms, two different studio rooms, two different rooms. Yep. And we would just bounce ideas, and then when we came together. That's when the real, I think the real magic really happened when yep. it was like, oh, nigga, we, we yeah, got some hits. <laughs> we got some hits. Yeah, we yeah. Got some hits, man. What, um, what inspired you, bro? Because, I mean, 
we we know we we chop it up like all the time every day but mm -hmm. like we don't really really get to sit down and just talk about music and life and all of that stuff all the time yo but we do be on that call of duty though all night man all night, night. shout night out to the man. boys man shout out to the boys man but yeah what what inspired you bro like back take it back to like when your first song that you ever heard oh man first song i ever heard that i would remember um, my pops had the uh, the vinyl Thriller album. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, everybody always jumped to just go straight to Thriller. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm reading the back of the cover. You know what I mean? I'm, what, five, six years old reading yeah. the back of the cover. Um, looking at the producers, looking at the songs, seeing Quincy Jones, you know, studying Quincy Jones like early. You know what I mean? But the first song um, was Rock With You. Yeah. Like that song right there, and then seeing the video, you know what I mean. That that was heavy inspiration. You know what I mean to yeah. see, like, to hear all these different sounds and movement of sounds and things like that. Mm -hmm. Man, it just made me all right. Let me figure out how I can do this when I start up again. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, of course I got into artistry first. Mm -hmm. Um, had a little group. Um, you know R and B. You know it that didn't pan out too well. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, but. It was a good try, you know what I mean. So, um, we tried. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But that was able for me to sit down and get my pen right. You know, sitting there writing in the car, writing my first song, going into an actual studio for the first time, which mm -hmm. was a closet. Yeah, back at the crib. Yep. You know what I mean. But you, you had know, the sock we, over the mic. Treated, yeah, yeah, bro. We had the had the wooden boards. Yeah, like, we ain't have all the the, all pads, the nice man. stuff. The nah, pad. Yeah, yeah, that, man. But yeah. I, I treated that like. I was doing something, you know what I mean? Like right. I did, like, I'm going to the studio tonight, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Although I'm going to be in the closet, that's where I'm going to be at. You know Man, I mean? them, them, them days, I think, is taken for granted nowadays. Mm -hmm. And it's no slight to the to the, the new age uh, artistry that's going on and creators. I, I just think that um, you got to you gotta have that moment. Yep. You got to have those moments where you really, like, can just tell that story like bro being in the closet having like a a soundproof uh what's them them joints you use to move move stuff furniture and furniture, stuff yeah. yeah them little cloths and stuff yeah. matter of fact jail he, yeah. he had some of them joints and and actually bro like same thing with me like we had the we had the two wall lockers in the in the in the uh barracks mm -hmm. and we we opened the doors and that was the booth yo yeah. So like we just put like the that um new and furniture little cloth mm -hmm. on there, soundproof cloth or whatever you want to call it, and um got to get in the work. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. That shit humbling though, man. Like, it that's, is. That's what they missing out on now. Yeah, man, studio is so accessible nowadays. Man, right. Anybody can just go in. And, like back when we was coming up, man, you couldn't just walk in the studio and, and at work. all. You know what I mean? Like it was if you wasn't. A known artist, or you knew somebody, like you weren't able to step foot in. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So now it's accessible, you know, which is good. Which is good, but I, I still mean? think they need to have that. It's like a missing piece that they gotta have into their artistry. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, and um, but it's it's no shade again. Like I said, mm -hmm. like you know, I just think they need to have that type of uh, humbling, bro. Yeah, that, the yeah, moments that really good. just be like, bro. Like I remember, I came from nothing. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. Nothing. Rapping in a closet yep. to rapping in a uh um a den to mm -hmm. to studios, like ran down studios yep. to the upscale studios. Yep. So now it's like once you do that, I feel like you're gonna You appreciate it. Yeah, too, you man. you're gonna love it. it the love it, it's always gotta the love has to be there. Yep. Cause if the love's there, you're gonna really appreciate what you really got going on mm -hmm. and where you came from. You yep. know what I'm saying? But um even with that, that off the wall was uh Rock which was on off the wall. Off the wall. Yeah, so it was off the wall off you listen to. Off the wall I listen to. So yeah. I and that's that. man, listen, I had this debate all the time. Off the wall and thriller, neck and neck. Yeah, hands down. They want one A, one B yep. for me. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Because literally I go song for song. Mm -hmm. And it might be one song. There's one song on there, on off the wall. That's like mid. Mm -hmm. and there's one song on Thriller. That's mid. Everything mm -hmm. else, fire, 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 yeah. bangers, yeah. right? All, all consecutive. Man. Yeah. Straight so down. after after you like um listen to that off the wall, 
what other music you was listening to? Prince, Bobby Womack. So like I, I came up listening to a lot of older records. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, my aunt used to have a little A track. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And she just just run records yeah. all day. You know what I mean? Blues Sundays in Alabama, like blues is a big thing. Yeah. Um, like I really wasn't listening to the radio. Right. You know what I mean? It was literally OJ's seventies records, eighties records. Like I'm an eighties baby, so mm-hmm. you know, of course, I'm always gravitate to that. But like listening to those records daily. You know what I mean? And, and just, it's a constant, all day, just the record just going. She changed the record out. Y'all go outside and cut the grass. We hear yeah. the music while we outside cut the grass. Right. You know what I mean? So, um, inspiration, man, came from music, like the the fullness of music that they was pushing. And they right. had live bands. They had, you know what I mean? They had everything. Man. Like yeah. Orchestras. Barry White with the orchestra. But like, you don't see that. Now the intros was like five minutes long five minute intro. before you even get to the song. Yeah, you know what I mean. You know what I'm saying. So yeah, that shit was amazing to see that. You know what I mean. And we got to see that and see them living legends. You know what I mean. In their time when they was around. Yeah. What um. What started the 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 artist part of you, that songwriting part? Yeah, because so, you wasn't a producer first. Nah, I was an artist first, man. I right. went by I went by T. <laughs> I went by T. Yeah. Man. That was that was just my name. I started out as a hook man. Um, so you know, I was working with a lot of rappers in Mobile and just singing hooks and you know, um, getting on little mixtapes back back when the mixtape era was a thing, which mm-hmm. was dope. Um, just constantly trying to be in the room and hey man, you need a hook, you need a hook, you need a hook. You yeah. know what I mean? Shopping myself out that way. Um, they gave me opportunity to write more too. You know right. what I mean? I hear what they're talking about and I can sit down and and you know figure out on my end what I need to you know, tackle. So, um, songwriting came in with that, man. Just being that hook man and, you know, yeah. being in the room with them. How, how how do you start, like, your process when it comes to uh, writing? Um, Usually, my process with that, man, is just, like, it's good to have a conversation first. You know what I mean? Like, especially when I'm in the room with artists now. Mm-hmm. Um, let's build a conversation and see what we're going to talk about. The song could keep playing, but we talking, right? We just talking yeah. about life or whatever. The moment we get that that spark is like, all right, boom, this is what we need to write about. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let's start with the hook, though. You know, because that's the thing that you got to gravitate to more. So, um, you know, hours go by, man, we knock a hook out, and then everything else flows, man. Cause yeah. You already had the conversation. You know what I mean? You already talked about it. Um, You deep dive into it. You ask them, them hard questions that, you know, people don't ask. You yeah. know what I mean? It just, make, it just makes that flow easier to just pin it out. So okay, so the uh the artistry started, and then what was the what was the turning point to make you go to the Navy? Man, um, so I went to school at Tuskegee, um, during the recession, you know, recession hit, dropped out, um, but while I was there, I was in the choir, mm-hmm. um, got to travel around with the choir, but also I was in ROTC, Air Force, right? So yeah, I was trying to be a Tuskegee Airman, um. Did that for about a year. That kind of introduced me to the military side. You know right. what I mean? I wasn't as serious as I am. You know, you're 17, 18 years old. You're a kid, right? right. You're going on the Air Force Base and people salute you. You know what I mean? You got your flight suit on. Mm-hmm. It was weird for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? To see these old men do this. But recession hits. You know, couldn't find a job. Um, really wasn't tackling music no more. Like, mm-hmm. I put the artistry down and, you know, went looking job hunting and all that. Um... Just randomly just popped up at a recruiter's office, man. And I was like, look, like, I want to travel. I want to get out of Alabama. Um, like, what do I need to do? Right. And signed my name on the line, man. And just took off. Took off, bro. Yeah. Now, when you got in, <laughs> what was the culture shock for you? Heavy. Yeah? Heavy. Like, the first six months of me being in, I had already hit in, like, 15 countries. Dang. In the first six months, um, got to experience Dubai for the first time. Got to experience, you know, uh, Manama Bahrain and, and places like that. Like getting around and meeting people, seeing different cultures, um, was a shock. Yeah, from a country boy that you know you right. go from nothing to now you over here looking at the tallest building in the world, drinking wine on on a damn <laughs> you know yeah. penthouse. You know, it, it was it was a major shift for me, man. Yeah, like that that opened my eyes to like. Uh, my first deployment, 
that was just an experience for me to just get out. That second one was music. Like that's when the music. Went, that's when they kicked in. Yes, that second one, bro. Everything was music. Everywhere I went, I was in the studio. I was working with their artists. I was sitting in the room making beats on the boat. You know what I mean? Like so. I that's was, that's pretty much where your your uh your sound came from. Yes, because you're not like. People wouldn't know you was from Alabama unless you said it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? People wouldn't even know where you was from because your sound travels. Your, you got a global sound. Yep. And not to mention Latin, Grammy nominated. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So, like, just me, when I hear, like, your music, man, we always critique each other all the time. I'm like, yo, take this out, put this in, add that, or send it to me. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. What what was the like the the part like well what city really hit it off for you to be like yeah I'm about to I'm about to really start doing this music like you know what I mean like with everybody and and not just honing in just on one genre oh man um being in the Middle East like yeah. actually being in the cities in the Middle East um and and listening to Arabic music right like mm-hmm. you know I I, had, I would hear snippets of in the samples that Timberland used right, right. um. And that was always dope to me. You know, that era, the 2000 to 2005. Classic era. Where everybody era. Was doing the, yeah. Gwen said it wasn't, but. No, oh, that was, bro. That, Gwen younger than was, us. Yeah, you yeah. Know what that mean, era so. was solid, man. Solid. Like, like A-Rap money and, and all that. Yeah. Man, like, the clubs was crazy. Crazy when them songs came yeah. on. You know, but to actually be over there and um, see them playing these instruments, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Um, just watching the shows, going to the Arabic clubs and things like that, and just seeing how their culture reacts to just music, like how all cultures react to music. It's right. just a different sound. Um, picking up that sound, working with those artists. You know, working with those artists, they're going to want you to make something centered around their culture, but right. make it your own. Right. So that was, a, I was, I was in my mind. I'm like, y'all fucked up now. Yeah. You're teaching me how to create this. But I'm creating it in my own way. Making it in my own way. Yeah, yeah. y'all messed up. You know what Damn, I mean? So that's fire. Yeah. That's fire, bro. I think that's like my only regret from not when I was in the Marines, like not going on a mute with, with y'all. Mm-hmm. Because that that literally like I love traveling. You know what I mean? Yeah. I love seeing different mm-hmm. countries and, and experiencing the cultures and with music, bro. Like for me, I jumped back into the music when I joined. As mm-hmm. soon as I joined, like I met my boy Hash, which is crazy. He in Thailand right now. Mm-hmm. He like he out there with his wife and his kids and everything. He um, bro, he was using Magic Music Maker. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And again, like I, I couldn't get, I couldn't get with it. So I, I, I tried FL. I think it was like seven or eight. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And um, I still couldn't get to it either. So then when I came back from my first deployment, I bought a Phantom X Six, mm-hmm. and I went crazy with it, dog. And yep. I never still, don't, to this day, I don't know how to play the piano, but mm-hmm. I know the keys. Yep. And I was learning as I was going, mm-hmm. and um. Which leads me to you. How did you start playing the piano? My mother played piano. My my uncle played piano. Like I come from a musical family, man. Yeah. Like very musical. Like it it would just be times we go over to my grandmother's home, just sit in there, and they just my uncle pulled a keyboard out and just everybody started singing. Right. You know what I mean? And in harmony, like mm-hmm. as a choir, it was weird. Right. Know? That's the that South a, for you, though. That's the South. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it was a it was a thing where, you know, we would all go over there, eat good, you know, send the kids outside, come in, and everybody would just start singing, yeah. you know, at the end of the night. So, um, me watching my mother play the keys and watching my uncle, they all play by ear. I play yeah. by ear. Um, So, learning how, you know, different chords and progressions and things like that mm-hmm. made me want to jump in and pick it up guitar, too. So right. I went and picked up a guitar, I went and bought it, tried to learn some chords, learn how to play that a little bit. You know, it was mostly just, I was trying to chase that Ryan Leslie Prince, Yeah. Type of, you know, mindset of I want to play every instrument, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? I want to be that one that I can go in the room and just pick something up and just play at least yeah. a riff or something. You know? Right. Um, so, keys is all by ear, man. Yeah. Learned that from my mom. Oh, I know. I see, I've seen it yeah. time and time again. Yeah. I'm just like, bro, how does he do that? Yeah. Like, me as a drummer, it's like, bro, how do I get my fingers to yeah. even do the, like, the, uh, what's the one joint you be doing, the little, um, it be like the, the little, little twing. Yeah, bro. I forgot the name, the, the proper name yeah, the proper for name, it. Yeah. But the, uh, to me, it's like a flam when mm-hmm. it comes to drums and stuff. So, like, I'm like, bro, how the hell? The, um, the grace note. Yeah. That's what it's called. Yep. 
Like, how the hell he be doing that? I'd be like, bro, just add something to it and do that little Grace Note <laughs> thing, you, the little, the little twang thing you be doing. That shit used to get me every time we we uh we producing this shit, like, you yeah. know what I mean, collabing. So, yeah, bro, that's 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 fire, bro. Like, my, my, dad, my dad played the saxophone. My brother played the saxophone. I wanted to play the trumpet. Mm-hmm. I got a I got a pocket trumpet in there now. Uh, Nikki gave it to me, dog. Okay. Nick, Nick and Days. Yeah. They supposed to be on here soon, man. Um, yeah, shout out to Nick and Days. Shout out to Nick and Days. Um, yeah. Queen David. But yeah. yeah, they uh like I wanted to play the trumpet, bro. And uh, my dad was like, "Nah, you always beating on stuff. Here go twenty dollars. <laughs> trumpet too expensive." Yeah. So uh yeah man we we uh me as a drummer, bro. I think uh it's dope. Being a drummer is dope, but I think if you play the keys, everything else falls in place. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Everything else is easier to, for you to understand because yep. we wasn't going off keys. Nah. You know what I mean? We going off rudiments. Yep. You know what I mean? Eighth note, sixteenth note, mm-hmm. triplet. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Rest, all of this. Like you know what I'm saying? But for y'all, like to actually, you playing this joint by ear, and it's it's it sounds. Exactly how it's supposed to sound, mm-hmm. or even you, you be like, nah, I think that's off. Like that's off. Try go go down an octave, go yeah. down a, you know what I mean? And I yeah. be like, I used to be in there, bro. When you be in the studio, I be like, huh? <laughs> what you hearing, bro? Because like we both got that ear. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, bro, I hear it. I hear it this way, mm-hmm. and it was like maybe one chord off or something, and you you tweak that joint. So now, you know what I mean? Like you. What, how many years you in now? Fifteen. Fifteen, bro. Shout out to the Navy, by the way. Yeah, you know, we we Navy. I tell people all the time, the Marines is under the Department of the Navy. Mm-hmm. The shipmate, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, man, how how was this transitioning from music with music, not even from music, just music with the Navy? How does that work for you? How does it work, man? I mean, I, I know one thing, I don't get no sleep. You know what I mean? I, I go to work, I get off, and yeah. I'm in the studio. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like music is my passion. So for me, any opportunity I got to get in there and get some work done or be in the room, yeah. I'm going to do that. Yeah. Even if it is on the account of me being exhausted the next day, like, I'm I'm willing to do that. You know what right. I mean? Because, like, when I was working on Groove Theory, right, like, that was many like 12 3 o'clock in the morning nights mm-hmm. you know what i mean it didn't happen to go to work the next morning like four or five in the morning right you know what i'm saying so and to caveat off that going you was going to work the next morning but you was also getting people from across the world to send you yep. verses yep. you know what i'm saying yep. like not too many people can do that bro yep. like you know what i mean and and i'm giving bro his flowers now because mm-hmm. this dude taught me a lot but at the same time, bro, you didn't taught a lot of people, mm-hmm. and you know us as Virgos, bro, like we we pretty much we don't. I ain't gonna say we don't care because we do <laughs> fucking care. Yeah, a little bit. But it's more like, like I said before, we just want the fortune, man. We ain't really caring about the fame. You yeah. know what I mean? Like that fame is, it's cool, yeah. but you know what don't mean? Last forever, it bro. don't last forever. Yeah. You know what I mean? We want to be recognized as. With the greats, you know what mm-hmm. I mean. Just you know what I mean. People know who we are, like with the Troy Taylors, the mm-hmm. the uh, the JDs, Jermaine Dupri, mm-hmm. the the Dr. Dre's. You know what I'm saying. The DJ Quicks, all of them. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying. And even the Southern producers, bro. Because I think me personally, um, my top producers, most of them come from the South. If you think about it, Timberland, yep. Tim- Pharrell. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. They come from the South. Yeah. And it's so many of them, though. It's like, I can't give... People always ask me for my top five. Like, bro, I got like a top 40. Right. You know what I mean? Hard, it's hard to just... I got a top 40 of producers. Yeah. And it's no set one. This number one. This number three. Mm-hmm. Number five. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But for you, who your top five? I mean, of course, Tim, Pharrell. I put Ryan Leslie in the mix. I knew you, got, you I knew he was going to put him in there. Yeah, I know. Ninth or Wonder. Less. Yeah. Um, Jay Diller. Mm-hmm. How many is that? Four. That's four right there. Um, Ninth Wonder, Jay Diller. Damn. Um, me. Hey, 
Hey, bro. Yeah. Put yeah. yourself in that yeah, joint, dog. There. Hey, put yourself in that because you got all you got sounds from all of them. Yo, and it's crazy that you when you said all of those names, like I heard your records that sound like all of them. Mm-hmm. And it's and I tell this now, producers create your lane. Yo, but it's okay to sound like your yeah the people you the people you look up to because that's who you. Everybody does it. Mm-hmm. Like Timberland got it from whoever he got it from. Pharrell got it from the old school, the Isleys, whoever. Yo. Matter of fact, Teddy Riley. Yep. You know what I'm saying? He got it from them, from working with them. And um, it's okay to to have these people you look up to to mimic their sound, but then you create your sound from that sound. Right. You know what I mean? Because that's how, you know what I mean, a lot of producers start blowing Yep. Blowing up, you know what I mean? Yep. Shout out to like ATL Jacob, yep. Southside, um, uh, TB Digital, yep. you know what I'm saying? Sunny yep. Digital, Sunny all of those, Digital. all of those cats, man. Like they're in a studio together and they building, creating a sound together, yep. and then they also creating their own sound outside of it. So yep. it's okay to assimilate, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Because that's what we do. Yeah, we do it all the time. You know what I'm saying? You be like, hey, tweet, put some drums on this joint, or. Hey, tweet, send me that. Let me add something to that. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And that's that's how it is, bro. Like, and and that's what leads me to the next joint. The next joint is how we connected. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because it's about relationships. Yeah. We connected a crazy way and yeah. ended up being tight ever since. Yep. Let's talk about that. Yeah, so I stand it, right? Shout out to I stand Shout out to man. I stand it. Um, you know, I was tapped in with them. Pretty early in, I had never done any events. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, because I was always out of, out of the country, or whatever. So I wasn't able to be around. Um, but you remember they had that that little uh, what was the little chat they had? It wasn't Discord. It was uh, uh, it was be, it was before Discord. It was, before it was Discord. like Slack, Slack, Slack. They had this Slack yeah. channel, man. Yeah, Slack and, um, channel. I remember one time I think I put in. I was like, Hey, I'm in the DMV. Who's in the area? And Tweez hit me up. Um, I remember you shot me a message like, I'm in the area, or whatever. Um, and then that was it, right? We just went on, yeah, whatever, right? I end up going to um, what's the what's the coffee shop? Gerani went to Gerani's for an open mic. Shout um, out to Gerani shout again. Shout out to Gerani's again. Yeah. Man. Um, went to the coffee shop to go support. Uh, forgot who that was. The it studio. Was, it, it was, was Ben. It was Ben's and uh, and Bucky. Yeah, it was Ben's and Bucky because they yeah. invited me out there. Yeah. Um, I go and you know we all in the back in the VIP or whatever. And uh, Frank walk up to me. He's shout like, out hey, to Frank yeah, Lee. Shout out to Frank, man. Frank come up to me and say, "Yo, S man, like I got somebody I want you to meet, man. Like I think he, I think you'd be dope, man. I think y'all should work together." I was like, "All right, all right cool." So you know, Tweez come up. It's like, "What up, man?" I was like, "What's your name?" He's like, "Tweez." I was like, "Like Tweez of the Beat Terrors?" He's like, "Yeah, that's why." I was like, "Nigga, we yeah, I, like I stand it, bro. Like." You know what I mean? We 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 tapped in right there. I think yeah. we sat down and talked for like an hour, bro. Yeah. About just we chopped it up. I was like, bro, I'm gonna invite you to the studio tomorrow, man. Come in and you know what I mean, cook up with me. Yeah. Um, Cause I think that was a Friday night. You used to do the Saturday. Yep. Uh, yeah. All day. So I was like, I, I do this thing at the studio where I invite producers over on Saturdays and we just we just cook up all day. Um, yeah. And you pulled up, same shit, different rooms. And I'm bouncing around, listening to everybody. I think you was in B the first time. Yeah. I went in B, you was in there chopping, cooking up, and then I came in, laid a little something on yeah. the keys. That was that ended up being um, um, that record we did with uh, um, the Bad Boy record. Oh, for um, for uh, Boy Toy. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. No, no, yeah. Bad Boy. The joint off your album. We did the Boy Toy. Oh no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. The joint for um, for Shotter Brother. Yep, Shotter uh, Brother. Damn. How the fuck I forget his name, <laughs> but um oh first class drag yep shout out to drag shout out yeah drag. yeah we definitely damn that, that we was did the do first that record. that was the first joint we, we ever did and, um, yeah he was like damn. man throw some leads on this man I had the little two keyboards I'm in there doing this yeah so he's just sitting there looking like God damn bro yeah bro because I yeah. I never I never seen nobody work mm-hmm. that work ethic like you know what I'm saying like with analog gear you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying not just Digital, cause again, Hash was dope as hell with digitals. He knew how to like take sounds. He was the first person that showed me how to take a sound from an actual song, like a, if it was a kick drum or whatever. Yeah. He had take that one piece, t- chop it up, cut it, 
put it on and save it, and then that'll be his drums for whatever yep. he want to use for later on. And I'm like, yo, this dude is doing this shit digital. Like yeah. this, this is crazy. That's when I knew. I'm like, yo, this, like analog is analog going away. Like mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, like when I seen you, bro, I'm like, yo, this dude is fire. Because again, like we heard each other mm-hmm. on in like the beat competitions on on Slack and mm-hmm. online, but. Like I was actually going to the shows, like you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying. I was doing the, the beat competitions, and I tell you, bro, my beats was trash. <laughs> my beats was trash, man. Yeah. And I had Street Runner. Mm-hmm. I had uh, I had Needles. I had like real, real, real producers kids. listening, yeah. but they were telling me, "Hey, man, you need to, you need to mix it. You need to do this." Um, and I didn't understand what what beat battling was. Mm-hmm. I was playing like us. Mm-hmm. We play songs yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah, we're we gonna play we're gonna song. play a yeah. song we're not playing no transition every two four bars mm-hmm. like you know what i'm saying and i had to learn that mm-hmm. and once i learned that that's when i was just like okay bet let me let me do this part and then i end up winning yeah. a few and i made it to you know the beast of the beast a couple of years which was, which was dope because you know what i mean you couldn't go, man, but I wish you did because, like, bro, that Miami one was fire. Atlanta was fire, too. And it was just, like, the fact we was traveling, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, and building relationships with, like, 100 other producers, mm-hmm. which, to this day, I'm still cool with a lot of them. Mm-hmm. And shout out to Shada because Shada need to be on here, too. Shada, um, Shada was the first guy um, from I Standard that asked me to be a part of his production team, mm-hmm. which was Sound Cartel. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's how Sound Cartel... I, I started with Sound Cartel, and, and to this day, man, it's still shout out to Sound Cartel. I'm still, yeah. still a part of them. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like that's that's family. Yeah. So, um, yeah, bro. What uh, how did we start D D C dog? The collaborators. Oh man, yeah, we started this little production group called the Collaborators, man, during COVID. Um, yeah, and that was through um, Clubhouse. Clubhouse. Yeah, you know everybody was on Clubhouse and. Cap house now, but yeah, it's cap house now, man. It was it was a genuine spot. Rooms. Yeah, it was it was a gym spot, man. Like we would we would just get in rooms and it was big motherfuckers jumping in the rooms with us, yeah. listening to beats, right? But we started getting the same, you know, faces showing up. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because me and Tweez started the the group chat up. We started it up. Mm-hmm. We were just like we just going. Me and Tweez would just sit there and just play beats because we couldn't go to the studio. Yeah, Tweez would be like, I'm working on this, and he played, and we, you know. Hey, bro, send me that. Boom, we just bouncing. And a couple people start joining in and start playing their beats. And, you know what I mean? And, and we went from there. And next thing you know, we had, what, about 15, 20 yeah, something? It, it was about 15 of us. It yeah, was about 15. 15. We had artists, yeah. songwriters, yep. um, <clears throat> of course, producers, yep. Swim, Crazy, yep. uh, Mental, uh, Mental, yep. um, Rob, Real, Big, Big Rob, Rob, Big Rob, yep. man. Big, Big Rob, Rob, when he played. The piano, the, anything keys, bro. Yeah, he on it, man. He is on it. Yep. Will. Yep. Will. Um, sh- sh- crazy fingers. Shots out crazy fingers. Man, we had, bro. We, we had a squad, bro. We had a squad. <laughs> had a when squad. it came to production and Will. it came to writing, mm-hmm. we had a squad. Oh, and um, uh, Frank. 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 Yeah, yeah Frank. Frank Finger. And we was all around. Now, that, I think to me, man, that was that was the the dope part of, um, COVID because mm-hmm. COVID was trash. It was horrible. But, but COVID, we made some... but COVID also gave us the opportunity, and showed us that like, bro, we can work anywhere, anywhere. Yeah. and don't have to be in the studio in the studio together. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And um. Shout out to the collaborators, man. Everybody a part of the collaborators. Mac. Um, who else I'm missing, bro? Shit, we had Stavo. Stavo. Yeah. Um, damn, man. I think I, I think I named them all. You named them all, I think. Did I miss anybody? Oh. How did I miss, bro? Bro in L.A. Motherfucking Micah. Saint. Saint. Yeah, man. My, that Saint, motherfucking man. Saint. Motherfucking Saint. Saint man. was fire, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, still is to this day. I still talk to him. You know what I mean? Like, I keep in touch with pretty much everybody. Yep. You know what I mean? But um, I just, you know, if you ain't working, bro, I can't. <laughs> hey, no love move, loss, but yeah, we move fast. Yeah, man. we move fast, bro. Like, because yeah. from seeing us go from where we started to actually working with artists, 
that's like, you know what I mean, got labels and working with artists that we building up. Yeah. We got to, <laughs> we moving. Yeah. So like, um, Saint, bro, that bass, bro, when he play that bass every time, bro, Saint and, and Rob just together, bro, was just crazy, was man. Crazy. crazy. Like and, they just, um, Rob, hey, Rob, man, what you want, man? Like, you want some Faith Evans kind of feel? Like, man, yeah, give me something like that, man. And just the next day. What you, dog, what you need? Yeah, what, like, what you need? Tweet, what you need? What you need? Over that? Like, ask, yeah. ask, ask, <laughs> ask what you need. <laughs> bro, he will always be like that, bro. Yeah. But remember, I remember, dog, that nigga said, my favorite producer is S. <laughs> he had you in the top five, nigga. I was like, shit. Like this nigga ass is like that. Yeah, but yeah, man. Yeah. Um, shout out to the gang, man. Yeah. The collaborators. Um, yeah, man. We had we had some shit, man. We still do. We had some shit. We shopped some records out. We definitely shopped you know some man? records out. And shop then out. remember we started getting more people coming. Mm-hmm. Like shout out to Wasilla. Yeah. Shout out to uh, what's her homegirl? Eight. What was it? Eight. It was eight something. Eight. It was eight. I but. She know who we talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Wasilla, Wasilla, uh, homegirl. Man, we had some. We had some. Oh, Delancia. Yeah, CC. 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 Um, man. And it was crazy, man. We had we, we got some artists, and we all came together, and CC came out. Yep. I had her to come out, perform, and, and, and a competition out here with uh, Tone P. Yeah. Um, man, it's just crazy how the relationships that we built. It's still going on to this day. Yeah, you they know still mean? reach out. Like Cece, still... Cece called me two weeks ago. She was like, "Hey, big bro, I'm with I'm with Juvenile right now." Yeah, um, you know what I mean. We out we out in L. A. I'm like, oh, I'm proud of you. She, like, she was just on million dollars worth of game at yeah. that that knockout party yeah. joint that they had. Yeah, she was a uh, yeah, she was a, a um, ring girl. Yeah, so she she doing her thing, man. I'm proud. Shout of Shout out girl, to Cece, man, because she got she got some stuff coming out too, man. Yeah. Um, she making some moves. Bro. Yeah, she got some stuff coming out. But yeah, man, with the with, with the collaboratives, you know, sometimes we we gotta transition. We always transition, bro. Mm-hmm. And um, the studio opened back up, mm-hmm. and we went. I went ape shit. We went crazy. I was I was at a point, bro. I had a song dropping every month. Yeah. With an artist. Yeah. A song or two. Lucy, Lucy Kabi, um. Uh, what's Mike name? Willian. Mike Willian. Mike Willian. Like, like um, what's bro, bro? Uh, that you was with yesterday. Nico. Nico. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, we was dropping. One zero. One zero. We was dropping. Shout out to all y'all, man, cause like it was crazy. Cause me seeing that, mm-hmm. it was like, oh yeah, it's time to turn up. <laughs> like, yeah. it's time to turn up. And then that's when we came up with what the uh. At, at, as soon as I got back in the studio? Yeah. That's when I did Groove Theory. It, it was Groove Theory? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it was Groove Theory. Then after Groove Theory. Then we did uh, Virgo Land. Yeah. Man, we did Virgo Land, man. Good old Virgo Land. Yeah, Virgo Land, man. That's debut R&B project for me. Yeah. To come back out of retirement. You yeah. know what I mean? And, and drop that and we get, what, three, four hundred thousand? Yeah, easy. 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 You know what I mean? So. Easy. Um, the shit was dope, man. It was it was good to just get out, get it out the bag, man. Throw it out there and never do that shit again. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's <laughs> and that's what I want to tell people, man. Producers mainly, um, and artists, put the music out. Just yep. put it out. Yep. Put the music out. Don't even care. Not like, hey, put it out. Make sure it's good quality first. Yeah. Put it out and just and just hey. Throw it on a on a little board yeah. and just keep it going. Start working on the next thing. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of times, man, we 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 run into those people where they just like put something out and then just fade. Mm-hmm. And then we be like, yo, where you at? Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. And um, you know, sometimes it happens. But at the same time, in order for to get to where we trying to go, you know what I mean? Consistent, man. You gotta be, gotta consistent, be consistent, bro. Yep. You gotta be consistent, and you you. It's okay to reach out and be like, "Hey, bro, can you put something on this?" Mm-hmm. Or, "Hey, send me something. I need some motivation." Yep. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes we have those. Tell you, man, this this industry is a roller coaster. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You can be still going up, and you ain't even damn came down yet. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You just going up, 
and you just wait and anticipate, 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 and then boom, you know what I mean? It can happen, but we just don't know. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I tell people all the time, like, look, keep grinding. Yeah. All keep you can grinding. do is keep going, man. Like, there'll be plenty of times where I'm just like, I don't feel like cooking up, but then I'll hear something, and then I sit my ass down and just, let me just start something. Yeah. Eight, nine bar loop something. You know what I mean? Yeah. To show that I'm putting my hours in. Although I done way bypass that 10,000 hours. Mm-hmm. Bro, but still, it's good to keep trying to perfect it and, you know, to right. make it get better. So, Yo, you know. talk, talk to me about this uh, this Latin Grammy nomination you had, man, yep. with this guy named Fernando Monk, right? Yeah, man. So, I don't know. I still, to this day, it I remember. Because I remember, I think I hit you up. Mm-hmm. I was at the studio when I found out. Um, so I get reached out um, on Sound Better. It's a, it's a um, website mm-hmm. um, where they got, you know, label industry engineers, producers, and things like that. You know, right. artists send in, you know, their ideas. And, hey, can you do something with this? Well, this, this particular individual calls me on WhatsApp. Right, it's a plus whatever the fuck number. So I'm yeah. like, I don't know who this is, but I answered and he was like, "Look, I don't speak much English, but I heard what you do, and I want to work." I was like, "All right, cool. Well, send me something, you know." So he sent me his records, and you know, I went home, cooked something up real quick, mm-hmm. and shot it out to him. Went yeah. on about my day, right? Right. Went on about my day. Back at the studio, doing what we had to do. Then I get a ping because I got Google alerts for my name. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. A ping like. Latin Grammy nomination, you know what I mean? Fernando Monk, best new artist. I'm like, what? Yeah. So I call him again. I was like, hold on, time out. Because I hadn't heard the record. Right. You know, I sent it off and I went on by my day. Mm -hmm. But he credited me. He did everything he needed to do business-wise, which, you know, kind of like the jail situation, right? It is. Like, if he wasn't credited, he wouldn't have been on. Right. You know what I mean? But the fact that they credited me, um, and when the Grammys changed up that, that um, rule where you don't have to own a certain um, time stamp on mm-hmm. a project in order to be a part of that right. nomination. So the fact that that Sin Agenda got nominated, which is his album, mm-hmm. um, like every single person on that album, it was like eight of us, right? All fell in that category. That's you know fire. I mean? So um, it was big for him. It was big for me, but it was still like a shock. And I literally was in the studio again the next night, like just literally. working. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it, it didn't hit me until I got home, and I was like, "Home, home back in in VA or home in, in Alabama?" Home, home in VA. Okay. Yeah, it, it didn't hit me until I got home, and I was like, "Bro, like your whole name is changing now." Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'm laying in bed like, "Bro, all right." So I'm not just this person now. It's like you add that, you add them three words to your name. Like that just changes everything. And yeah, when I bro. did that, it changed everything, bro. Yeah, because I remember you was like at ten thousand on Instagram. Yeah, that shit changed. The next thing you know, like twenty five thousand. Yeah, that shit changed on Instagram. Bro. Shit changed. Overnight. I was like, damn. Yeah, overnight, I said bro. that's what it do. Yeah, I said I need that. Yeah, like you know what I mean? Because <laughs> yeah. we we chase we chase different things. Mm-hmm. Um, we ain't chasing the fame. We chasing the work. Yeah, you know what I mean. Building the catalog. Yeah, we chasing the catalog. That's mm-hmm. what we chasing. So when we when we trying to work with you, um, be, I would say, be uh, be open, be willing. Yeah, be, be open. Um, That's the best way to say it. Just yeah. be open, be willing to be just open. be able to work, man, and yeah. like be able to take criticism too. Because yep. I think a lot of times, man, we we deal with artists. And even ourselves, like, sometimes people don't like taking criticism. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I love it, it. Man, what? Please tell me my shit trash. Yeah. Because any other time, it. what you tell me, what you say when I, you be like, bro, I just, I just made this shit. This shit trash. Let me know what it is. Yeah. This shit trash. And I'd be like. Like, I, I love it. What? Because I, I just, like, the longer you do it and the better you get at it, you don't hear that no more. Right. Like how it was when we started out and it was like everything you was doing was horrible. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now we making songs and we making you know yeah. like some shit we man. we bringing bridges we bring, back yeah we out here you get what i'm saying fucking shit up we man. bringing bridges yeah. back man you know what i mean we bringing bridges back we doing the full r&b you know man, what i'm saying yeah like, man and, and i think that's that's another thing bro like 
R and B is R and B is here. It never left. Never left. It never left. And you know how I know it never left? Cause you 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 let me listen to this one cat. And I swear to God, I thought it was Maxwell. Yeah, Ballot, man. Shout out to Ballot. Shout out Ballot. Cause man. Ballot, man, oh my God. Yeah. And we was you were sitting on that record for about two years. Yeah, two years. Oh, shout out to my bro GQ too. GQ, man. GQ, man. Love is lane. Um, Love is lane dropping next year, man. Yeah. I got a couple like, on there. Man. Did did he do uh Beamer too? I don't know. I gotta ask him. Yeah, bro. We still got that in the tuck, man. I know. Pff, that yeah, that's fire, that bro. It's in the top, bro. Like that's when, like, just that off of that, dog. Ballot, ballot. I'm like, oh, this R, this R and B is here. The R and B is here. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, every song don't need a bridge. Mm-hmm. Um, shout out to Troy Taylor because he was, he was saying that on uh R and B Money mm-hmm. podcast, and he was saying like, he was giving it to his guy, and his guy was like, um, take out the bridge. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I get it because I was just saying that with Heaven. Yep. Um, the song, uh, I ain't even play it for you yet. I'm going to play it after. Right. But uh, with Heaven, it was, I'm like, yo, keep it short. Mm-hmm. Keep it short and sweet. Make a little chant here and there for the people to chant with you. Yep. Keep it short and sweet. Yep. So what um, what artists that you normally look for when you working? Ooh. Or how, matter of fact, even better, how do you determine if you're going to work with that artist? How do I determine? Yeah. Um, so for me, I take more of an old school approach, man. Like, you already seen my approach when mm-hmm. it comes to, like, before I reach out to anybody I'm going to work with, Yeah. I will listen to their full discography. Like, every single song they release. Mm-hmm. Just to see, like, how I can fuck shit up. Right. Like, in my mind, I'm like, I want to fuck shit up. Like, I, I've heard in a what good you, way. In a good way. Yeah. I've heard what you've done on this type of record, this type of record, and then when I reach out to them, you know, I'm I'm, I'm explaining this. I'm telling them, like, all right, this ain't no, hey, I'm gonna send you beats. This is all right, yo. I just listened to this track, man, and I, I like how you did the the, the falsetto on this. So I mean, yeah. that mean you got some range. This and this and that. You yeah. know, I'm I'm deep diving, and you know, by the time I do that, man, it's that's like when we work. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? And you know me, I'm I'm right at it, right then. Right. You know what I mean? You want to fly out here? You want me to come out there? Like, what we doing? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I'm I'm about moving. Like, I want I want some shit to shake like, right now. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, it's just reaching out, man, and, and you know, being personable. Like a lot of producers ain't personable nowadays. Yeah. Like you, see, you don't see that. Yeah. Everybody just like I, you know, I'm gonna reach out because I want to gain something <clears> from you instead of. Like, when you're talking about building your own catalog, building and being a part of that artist catalog, too. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, down the road, the artists I work with, I want I want somebody to blow up, right? And, you know, um, a publishing, reach out to them, and they want to buy every single song on their shit. Right. For, you know, <clears throat> two point, you know, $25.1 million. And then mm-hmm. I got three songs on there, so I get a cut of that. I yeah. would love for that to happen. I'm you telling I mean? you, bro, that'll be that'll be the day. <laughs> yeah, I would love for that. That'll be the day. Like you see Taylor Swift and all these people, they selling rights to their records, but everybody involved gets a cut of that. They get a percentage of that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because they, they are making classics. You know what I mean? So. And which leads me to my next question. <clears throat> How do you feel about artists, producers, um, managers? Engineers, anybody that has something to do with the record, not putting your credit on there. Oh yeah, that ain't it. I don't like it. Um, the least you can do, right? And it's it's a business, man. Like, yeah, we you know a lot of people do it for a hobby and stuff, but mm-hmm. it literally takes a minute to type somebody's name. Credit, right, right. Especially you know. If, if people are involved in the record, like just put the name on there, man. Yeah. Like this is what they're doing. You know, you, you could do your splits, but there are a lot of artists I work with that don't know how to do that too. You exactly. Know what I mean? So, um, I think that's on us also to kind of give them the game on that too. Like mm-hmm. walk them through the process of right distributing a record the right way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Getting your splits situated. Yeah. Um, divvying it out the right way because you know we had that situation where you know we made a record and you know. Buddy just sent us a ten percent split, and I was like, "What is this?" You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah, yeah. so, bro, you know, I that, didn't even that, know if you wanted to bring that up, dog. No, 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 I'm not. You know. Oh my god, but, man! 
You know what I'm saying? But you know so. what's crazy? That's what that's what tore that's what kind of it ain't tear us apart as me and you. It tore the the team apart. Yeah. Because people started picking sides. Yeah. Because one, they didn't even know the business. Mm-hmm. And we trying to give them the game on yeah. how to do it. Yeah. And they still weren't trying to hear it. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? And it's like that's I think to me that's the most frustrating thing is when you're given the game free. Like I could have charged for all the that. game is to be yeah. sold, not mm-hmm. told. Mm-hmm. But from where we come from, we always want to let we don't want to be stuck with the last word. So we're yeah. gonna pass it on. Yeah. We're gonna pass the word on to our people. Yeah. Cause we want everybody to shine. Mm-hmm. But when they not intaking what we what we giving, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, bro, like, yeah. All right, dog. I can't, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Pop smoke. I'm about to pop smoke. I'm going this way. And that's what we did, bro. We kind of yeah. like we shoot, went our we went our own did, way. Man. Like you gotta. You got to credit people. You got to give them what they're entitled to. You got to give them what they, what they, you know, what they've worked hours and hours and doing, hours, right? bro. You know what I mean? Like an engineer, days. Engineers spending days on a record, like even when our engineers revisions. Done. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? We're doing multiple revisions and sending it off, and it's like, nah, this ain't it. Fix this. All right, we send it back. Cause we what? For Virgo Land, we we knocked that. Excuse me, we knocked that out in like a weekend. Yeah, that whole album. Yeah. But then we did revisions for like a week oh, or two. Yeah, no, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. We was doing revisions and yeah. revisions and revisions. Yep. And we're making sure everybody, even the engineers, hey, that don't sound right. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. But we made sure everybody was credited. Everybody was credited. Mm-hmm. Even the studio. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And we ain't even got to do that. Mm-hmm. But we do it just off the strength. If it's listed, I'm listening. Yeah. You know I'm, I mean? Hey. SEO wise, it's good to list all that, man, because now you're involving everybody, and that now those people are gonna push heavy promotion also. And then you know what? Because their name is tied to when it. when the people start looking like, damn, who who was on this record? Right. Oh, they they recorded it there. Right. Oh snap! So let me go there. Let me go there. Exactly. You know what I mean? And we were <laughs> we were the face. Mm. I'm gonna just leave it at that. Yo. You know what I'm saying? We were the face, and we would try to put. People in position and my, and 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 just keep the teams going, but I think a lot of times people just they want they want they want the satisfaction and they want the the right now instead of just being patient yeah. and letting because a flower don't grow overnight. No. You know what I'm saying? Fruit don't grow overnight. You got to let it bloom. You got to let it blossom. You got to let it go through. You got to let the roots seep through. Yo. You know what I mean? And I think that's where a lot of people go wrong, bro, because it's like, yo, you had something good, <laughs> but you so you so money hungry. Like this, bro, we, we in a messed up era in the industry. Yeah, we are. You know what I mean? Like when it comes to monetary wise, yo. like putting music out wise, great. Mm-hmm. We in a great space for mm-hmm. that. But, bro, we getting point zero zero three off of a dollar, yeah. and you know what I'm saying, like off of music that we put hard work in, mm-hmm. and nine times ten, now we got our own studio setups, but we we paying some way somehow yeah. for the time that we we did all this music, yeah. you know what I'm saying, and and it's like point zero zero three, yeah. like who are you to tell me? How much I, I how much I should get to. off my music? I'm not signed. I'm signed to myself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. None of you labels is 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 signed to me. Yo. Like how did how you gonna tell me? Oh, you know what I'm saying? Yo. You're not supposed to get this. And oh, don't let your don't let your numbers go up fast. Oh yeah, they're gonna be like, hey, hey, um, what's going on? What's going that? on right here? Cause mm-hmm. uh, it looks like you uh, this looks fraudulent. Mm-hmm. Like, bro. That's how they did Groove Theory the first time. Yeah. The first time I released it, and, and I, I knew why, you know what I mean? First of all, you got to think about it. Khaled was releasing them compilation albums. Mm-hmm. How many indie producers was doing that? Nobody. Nobody. It, was, it was us. So it I was did us. It. I did it. Yep. I tried it out. I just wanted to see. The thing is, is doing an indie compilation project with 35 artists, right? Mm-hmm. All 35 artists are listed. Mm-hmm. So. The argument was, 
how is this classifying? Like, first of all, how are you getting all these artists? Because think about it, those artists are bringing in their numbers also. Right. When the record comes out. They so, bringing their fans. Bro, the, the, the shit dropped on day one, and I had like 250,000. Yeah. One. And and Spotify was like, oh, red flag. Oh, right. And that's that's flag. that's the problem, because it did the same thing with me with, um, with uh, First Quarter. Mm-hmm. First quarter. With, with um, Terry Red, it wasn't a problem. Mm-hmm. But when first quarter, like I let first quarter sit and just let it just generate what it generate, you know what I mean, from all the, all, like you said, like all the uh, artists that was on a, on an a, a album. Yo. Then I started hitting up blogs, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Started hitting up promo, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Trying to get, trying to figure out our way. Because again, we in a we in a great space for music, but we also in a messed up space when it comes to we doing everything ourselves, yep. and we got to figure out who are the go to promotion teams, who are the go to marketing teams. Yep. You know what I mean? And me with my background in marketing from you know what I mean in school, it's like, bro, I'm analyzing everything. Yep. I'm I'm all right. I'm a I'm gonna put some money here for for marketing and promo this month mm-hmm. i'm gonna put some money here for this other company this month mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying and trying to see how does it work but then you get hit with the hey man you you didn't have this many streams last month you got this many streams you know what i mean yeah. united master sent me that yeah it wasn't even spotify united master said spotify said you got this spotify it's like bro like like you a damn yeah. Like you look like you trying to tell me like you right. like you the little brother or something right. like oh, Spotify said you did this, <laughs> Spotify said you did that, and I'm like, yeah. oh, give me my streams. Yeah, like I'm, bro, I'm I'm a regular artist like everybody else. I'm a producer, engineer, you know what I'm saying, right. songwriter. Right. Why well, I can't get my 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 you know what I'm saying my chicken? Yeah. It's only crumbs anyways. Yeah. Out they the chicken box. You know, you know how it is, man. They just they see certain jumps and they like, all right, this this is odd. You know what I'm saying, but. Yeah. Just keep pushing, man. Make more hits. Yeah, but to caveat that, every distributor, in order for you to get your percentage from distribution, you got to sign up for every one. Yeah. Even if you, like me, I'm signed to United Masters, but I Mm -hmm. still got to have a distro kid one. Yeah, because the artists we're working with, too. Yeah, because the artists got, they they got distro kid. Yep. So how you gonna get your percentage if you ain't got distro kid? You won't. You know what I mean? And that's one source of your income. Mm-hmm. Let alone if they ain't credit you. Yeah. So now you 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 might not even got your percentage on distro kid. And so it's like the crab in the barrel is Yo. starting to form again. Yo. Cause people people trying to cut corners. Yo. Like, bro, we getting Let's do it the right way the first time. Yeah, we, we we're getting a, a a piece of a penny. Off the penny, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So like, why would you try to shortchange that little piece that we get? Yo. you know what I'm saying? And then we still got to deal with all these distributors. So what, like, what that's what Snoop said recently. He he, he topped off with what one bill? Yeah, he said a bill should only got forty five thousand. You know what I mean? Like, like this owns, is Snoop. He owns his. He owns. He owns Death right, Row. He owns, owns everybody. Got their masters. You know what yeah. I'm saying? He owns all of that. How the hell you got a billion streams and you only get forty five thousand? Bro, what are we talking that's, about? Yeah, you know what I mean. You know what I mean, and that's he ain't under no ownership. It's yeah, all him. You know it's I mean? all but, him. And I, and I, and to me, dog, like that's the problem. It's like, bro, like we fight this on a daily basis. Yeah, and mentally, it, bro, we go through it. So I know, you know, I be, boy, I be going through it. And, yeah. and you know what I'm saying? I be like, dog, this is like, this, this ain't right. Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's like, what you gonna do about it? All you can do is advocate, man. Like, like one thing I like is like, uh, like the hundred percenters, right? Yeah. Uh, Tiffany, um, she's solid on, you know, pushing a lot of advocation out for like artists and you know all the background shit that go on that that you know people don't see. They only see the glitz and glamour. Right. So the only thing we can do is just advocate to do the right shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that people ain't getting fucked over. You know what I'm saying? So how how do you handle how do you handle those situations, bro? Mentally wise, because you know. Bro, you about the coolest. Mm-hmm. I thought I was cool, yo. calm, but I do turn up if I yeah. need to. Yo. Bro, I ain't never seen you turn up, dog. Like, nah. you be cool. I don't know if it's the wine. <laughs> I don't know what it is. If the Coors Lights. <laughs> Back in the day. <laughs> but I don't know what it is. But you be calm, bro. And I be yeah. telling you shit, you be like, you just be calm as hell, bro. Yeah. How you deal with that on a daily? 
I think I got so I think I've seen all the different like ills. Yeah. And 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 made my own fuck ups over time. Like to me, yeah, to be serious, but like that's only for like that moment. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, why would I dwell on something? You know what I'm saying? Just because I'm pissed right now. Like, why right. dwell on it? When me putting my energy into being pissed about this little situation right here is making me miss out on the work I need to be doing over here. Because I'm pissed over here, but it's, it's somebody else producing right now. Right. Making some shit, right? And yeah. I'm over here mad about this one situation. Right. Like, I'm, I'm going back to work, man. All right, yeah. let's, let's rub that shit off. Because you know me. I will move the fuck on quick. Quick. That's one I thing am, we known for. I will, you know. Pop oh, cool. smoke. We, we ain't on this? I bet. Yeah. And you won't hear from me. You know what I mean? Like, like, like on the, from a music standpoint. Like, mm-hmm. you, won't, you won't see me. You won't hear from me. You know what I mean? Because like, I'm, I'm on and moving forward. Like, if it's not in my path and it's not positive and it ain't moving forward, I'm not going to, you know. Yeah. Invest no, no, no time in the in, right. in the drama or you know negative negativity, man. Like I just, it's too much good shit going on. Fact. For me to even focus on it. Facts. That's, that's why. I rub, that's why I rub shit off. I just be like, yeah, right. bro. You, I swear to God, you, you that, you that, you that person. You know how like you be in church mm-hmm. and somebody be on you or like piece of lint get on you, bro. Yeah. Like that, that be your ass. Yeah. You, know? you, yeah. Every time, bro, I be man. You be hearing shit. You be like, bro, what? Hey, let's work on this. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey, what's the name? Just hit us up. Uh, shit, we need to do something for for uh for this. I'm be like, yeah, bro, you just bypass all that shit. It's like you the you the the human bypass yeah. is you. That's me. If man. you for all the engineers and producers know that that <laughs> bypass button, that's him. He gonna bypass all that shit. Yeah, easy. Yeah, easy. Moving hey. forward, bro. and that's what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? Like with me, dog. Like I, I've just you know what I mean. Getting older, it's like, bro. I got two daughters. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? This this nigga ain't got no kids. You know what I'm saying? If he can just push that shit off, why can't I? Mm-hmm. And I, that, I, mean, I literally, bro, like, I be looking up to you on certain shit, and I always talk to you, too, like, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like, and, and I don't have a problem with it because you younger than me, we family. So it's mm-hmm. like, I need that advice sometimes. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, same thing with rolling this shit. Like, we talk mm-hmm. all the time. And I always, you know what I'm saying? I listen to him. He he listen to me. And we give each other advice. And it's like, bro, like, I just, fuck, like, bro. Like, if it don't kill me, dog, like, why am I even tripping? That shit putting money in my pocket? Right. Oh, it ain't? Oh, okay. Right. All right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I hate to be an asshole, but, I mean, shit. You got shit to do, man. I you got, got shit to, to do, dog. You got moves to make, Shit, bro, I just, hey. I got to go to Dollar Tree once we leave here, bro. Just to go get me a little three-foot Dollar Tree for my Christmas tree, bro. Because the girls didn't ram my pockets. They yeah. didn't shug night me. Yeah. The shotgun shook me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> bro, I just paid $45 for a Beyonce goddamn uh, record. Yeah. A record. A vinyl. Yeah. Nigga, that shit like $12 in the stores. <laughs> 45 for a record. Yeah. 35 for a Dell record. Yeah. Uh... I got her some George Duke, you know what I mean. Try to keep my keep my kids, you know what I mean. Have, balance, have, yeah, yeah some keep them balanced, bro. Cause that's they my A and R's. They put me on a lot of pop. Yeah. you know what I'm saying. So it's like I got to put them on jazz, yeah. you know what I mean. Some classical, you know what I mean. Of course, you know, Lana love Beyonce, mm-hmm. but no, nah, bro, like that shit ain't. It don't phase me no more, dog. Yeah. Like it shouldn't. And it's like I just be I be to myself, Yo. cause like if it ain't, bro. That shit ain't, if it ain't bothering what I got going on, my kids, you know what I'm saying, my peace. Yo, keep it moving, man. I'm, I'm moving, dog. Moving, dog. So that's yeah. a hell of a, that's a hell of a thing to do, man. Just be a bypass button. Everybody out there, be, yeah, a, be a bypass, bypass button. button. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be the live wired button on <laughs> hot mic. Like the mic is hot, it's on record. Don't be that person. Just bypass it, man. Because yeah. at the end of the day, dog. Yeah. This ain't what you want. It ain't, man. You know what man, I mean? <laughs> this is, this is why, not only is this 11 years from the Marine Corps, this is 11 years plus Detroit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so you don't, this ain't what you want. Yeah. You know what I mean? So just, 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 you know, I'm going to let you live. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like you know I said, mean? man, my hands registered. I used to box. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I don't, you know, 
Yeah. And my hands registered too. I tell police all the time. Yeah. They be like, "You got any weapons in the car?" I'd be like, "Yeah." Like, hand. what you got? Yeah. My hands. These. You gonna arrest me for these? Right. They they came equipped with me. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't bring this in there. <laughs> yeah. That came with me. I yep. gotta drive. Yep. You know what I mean? This yep. is my weapon. So yeah, bro. Like, yeah, I don't. Oh, man, I ain't I ain't with all that, man. I just I don't I don't like the drama anyways. I just say what I gotta say. You listen, you listen, you don't. Cool. Yo. No problem. Bypass. Yeah. You know what I mean? But then eventually they hit you up down the road. Like it, it's it's a known fact, man. Like they see you moving. Yep. You might you might give a little game and you know, at first it might be like I don't give a fuck what you're talking about right now, which is mm-hmm. fine. You know, I'm gonna keep pushing and then down the road, who gonna be the one reaching out to work again? You. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it happens all the time. But guess what? What Fat Joe say? He said, oh, yeah, price keep going up, man. Yesterday's price. Yeah, price going up. <laughs> isn't today's price. Yeah. Like, my price went up years ago. <laughs> and it, it just constantly keep going up. It, you know it, what I mean? That's what I'm saying, bro. Like, I'm in here for the bread and the love. Yep. You ain't got the love. Once I see that love, you got little finicky little bones in your body. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's it. That's it. I can't do it. I can't work with you. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Because it's man, it's been so many times, bro. I be like, bro, I'm, yes, you supposed to hit people up, check on them, whatever, just to see how they do it. That's just me. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? But I can't keep making you, I can't, I can't make you come to the studio. Nah. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Well, it, you can't want this shit. If you, if I want it more than you, then that's the problem. Yo. Because this, this ain't just my shit. This whatever you trying to record. I'm trying to help you with what you trying to record. Yo. So if I got to drag you to the studio. Yeah, for two hours. For two hours? Mm-hmm. Out of 24 hours? Mm-hmm. Shit. With that, what's that, uh, what's that movie with a nigga? Shit. 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 You talking about, you talking about the wire. Shit. Shit. <laughs> Boy, not me, dog. <laughs> Shit. Nope. I'm not doing it, dog. Ain't no way, bro. I'm well, not about gotta, to drag you to the studio. Yeah. You got to want this shit just as much as I do. And yep. if you don't, cool. Yeah, keep pushing, man. Keep it going, bro. Keep pushing. God bless I'll you. I'll ask you. Be like, yeah. hey, look, you got a dope voice. Right. You know what I mean? I heard a little something, man. Let's work. Yeah, all right. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah. Next. All right, what's next? Now, we've been doing all of this crazy stuff, man. Talking crazy, cussing and stuff, man. Let's 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 bring it down. Let's bring it down. Let's bring it down to this gospel size you got going on. Mm-hmm. Talk about it, bro. You put my wine down. Right oh, there. man. That's, no, that's the uh, communion, oh, yeah, dog. Communion oh, you wine. need some right, bread right. and crack. You know what I mean? A little crackers. Yeah, yeah you're right. You're right. You got your communion, dog. That's communion so, right there. For starters, man, shouts out to the Fisher Girls, man. Shout out um, to the Fisher Girls. They gave me the opportunity. Um, They reached out to me. Actually, no, GDA, Garrett. Atkinson reached out to Shout me. Shout out man. to Garrett, man. Garrett's um, dope. He hits me up. He's like, man, hey, us, man, I need you to come up to Maryland, bro. I got some people you need you to meet. I was like, all right, cool. I was in a session earlier that day. Mm-hmm. We was doing like a vocal session or something with somebody. Yeah. And um, I ended up leaving. I just shot up to Baltimore area. Um, go in this, go in the studio with G. Um, meet these two women. Hey, how you doing? Nice to meet you. All right, so what are we doing? What we got? We do gospel. Cool. Mm-hmm. We want to work with you. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Never done that. Right. Never done gospel. Never. I mean, you know, coming up from a gospel family, you know, it's something that, like, my mother right now, man, she she loves that record. She plays it all the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that was, like, one of her proudest moments is to see me do a gospel record. That ended up charting. That went number one on BDS. Mm-hmm. Um... And yeah, that was that was a crazy time frame, man. And, and, and you know, they performed in festivals. They they won what three, four awards for that one yeah. record. You know what I mean? Like so, bro, for me, did, it was like it was like that little sprinkle, man. Yeah, was I was like, about to say, how did that is, feel, bro? Like, bro, that was it was you amazing. know what I'm saying? It was like, because I, I I work with some gospel artists and um, they ain't, they ain't even put the music out yet. I'm just still waiting. Shout yeah. out, um, I call her my mama, mm-hmm. but uh. Mama Harriet, mm-hmm. Mama Harriet, she um, she got some, she got an album. I'm just waiting. You know what yeah. I mean? And that's the thing too, patience. Yeah, you know, I I don't sat on records, bro. I'm still sitting on records. Shit, we still sitting on Newland records. We still sitting on some. Yeah, we sitting on some stuff. So you know what I mean, 
all it is, we do what we got to do. When they ready, they do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but um, yeah, the Fisher Girls, man, we went in. I actually went in the studio with them, sat in on that session. Um, dope session. You know what I mean? They they were they were very uh open to ideas and things as they mm-hmm. as they're singing a the song. And, um, it was different because I didn't want to do a contemporary gospel record. I wanted to do something yeah. more upbeat. You know what I mean? Jazzy yeah. kind of feel. So. I think that's probably why I gravitated to to a lot of people because it was something different. Yeah. You know what I mean? They they performing all over the all over the nation, man. Shot you, shot the video in Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's done really good, man. Do you have do you have um like a go to template or anything that you do when you dealing with different genres or you just go from scratch? I go straight from scratch. Straight from scratch. Yep. I okay. plug something in, I play some keys, find a melody, and I just do it. Top three plugins, give them. Omnisphere, Contact, and uh, Redrum. Bro, you see how fast that was? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Top three, Omnisphere, Contact, Contact Re- Redrum. Hey. Not a lot of people know about let that me, Redrum. Let me tell you about Contact, though. Yeah, yeah. Native Instruments, I, I, need, I, need, a, I need a collab ambassador, something like that, man. Because <laughs> me... And Shada, mm-hmm. Shada's the king of contact. He is. But when I tell you, man, the sounds you get from contact, yep. it's unmatched. Yep. Unmatched. Omnisphere, crazy. Yep. But contact has like all the Omnisphere and some. You know yep. what I'm saying? Because there's so many other companies that upload their... Yep. Their their NKIs their yeah. their their uh database into contact bro. Yo, contact is so fire dog. Yo, it is man. Redrum is on Reason though, right? It is. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. See, what I like is Reason's compatible with going in every dog now. Yeah. So I'll just pull up a Redrum and Reason. So it's a plug in now. It's a plug in. Yeah. I'll oh, pull the Redrum fire. up in, in in Logic and Damn. do my drums there. You just said Logic, bro. So you ain't in Reason no more. No. Nah. Why you switch to Logic? So, <laughs> all them years of doing Reason, man, like like he said, right? I he I got him into Reason. So I, this man was working in Footy Loose and Logic a lot. Yeah. So I would see that. I would see you working in Logic and seeing how smooth that was, right? And then of course it was compatible with Mac too. Yeah. You know I had a PC computer yeah. for years. Yeah. You know what I mean? And when I when I upgraded to to MacBook, you came on over to the good side. I was side. like, let me try this Logic out, and I saw how fast and you know smooth it was just to create and like i, I remember when i got it because i hit you up when i get the i went and got the laptop i hit yeah. you up and then i got home i hit you up to get some more um contact stuff or whatever yeah and i think that night i sent you like eight beats i made like just that day out the gate right out the gate like that that out motivated the, gate. the hell out of me to just sit down and just be like all right i need to create something because this is this fast i need to yeah i got ideas i need to get out Yep, yep. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Um, so contact atmosphere and redrum. You got your top three. You gave me your top five producers. Who are your top five inspirations from music? Top five inspirations? Inspirations of songwriters. Oh, songwriters? Yeah. Songwriter wise? Ooh. Um Brian Michael Cox. E. Cox. Um, of course. You know, um, Troy Taylor. Troy Taylor, the GOAT. Um, Jonte Austin. <laughs> um, let's see. That's three, man. That's three. Oh, my big sis, Alicia. She wrote for Rihanna, Crown the Replay. Yeah, yeah. Did she come to the studio that one time? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, shouts out to Majesty. Mm-hmm. Um, and ooh, Ray Get the Keys, man. Yo. Detroit song. My little sis, Ray Get the Keys. That girl's pen is vicious. Crazy. Like. And what I just heard earlier? Yeah. The stuff me and her got coming. Crazy. This week, December 17th. This What's the name mood, of it? This my mood dropping. December 17th, man. So, um. I literally love working with Ray, man, because I could just send her something and, and just wipe my hands clean with it. Yeah. 
and, and go on by my business and know that she gonna make a classic. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, and that's is, a fact. She is. That's a fact. Always. I gotta get like something with Ray man. too, man. That's 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 home team. That's Detroit. Um, what you think about the Detroit scene right now, bro? Never been. But I work with a lot of Detroit people. We were supposed to go, but you went on, you deployed. I deployed. You, you deployed I last to go to year. Detroit, man. Like, yeah, I our boys' trip was supposed to be Detroit yep. last year. You Trying damn deployed. Yeah, because I, I'm already working, and then we didn't already work with. Yeah, some legends from there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, um, definitely want to get out there, man. I mean, the music scene is dope. Like, yeah. I, you know, you put me onto a lot of Detroit artists. Um, and then of course, you know, working with Ray, mm-hmm. I got more Detroit. Artists reaching out to me and stuff like that because they yeah. want to get my sound. So, um, and I remember you told me like y'all are y'all are the cousin or the brother to Oakland. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So, yeah. Shout out to Oakland, the yeah, Bay. The Bay. So yeah. y'all got that. Y'all got that West Coast smooth feel yeah. to your music. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. you know, um, um, God, what was that one artist you had put me on? I, um, T Grizzly. Not Ice Wear Vezo. Yeah, Ice Wear Vezo. Bro, we went to school together. Yeah, we went yeah. to high school together. Shout yeah. out to Osborne. Yeah. We went to school together, man. He was with my uh, my homies, Get Money Boys. Yeah. And he, he was Vez at the time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He was Vez, bro. He had, I think it's from, from Rags to Riches, his first mixtape in high school, bro. Mm-hmm. Fire. The Drake was crazy. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, this dude. Him, Lil Jerry. Um, Shout out to my bro, D Bailey. Mm-hmm. Uh, R.I.P. Lil Ant, D Glove, D mm-hmm. Strip. Um, but yeah, the Get Money Boys, man, they had a, they had a, they run. Had a run, bro, yeah. and they still, they still, you know what I mean, they still out. Yeah. Um, shout out to Reese. Um, but yeah, um, Vez, man, Vez, man, cold and GT, yeah. GT, little bro, that's bro, like, yeah. grew up, you know what I mean. I was living off on Collinham. I think he was on what Fairmount. I think it was Fairmount and Regent. Mm. And you know what I mean? We used to go to the Boys and Girls Club together. Yeah. Never knew that, 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 that later on in life, dog, this this nigga would be a rapper. And he fire. We got we got something, bro. It ain't even out yet. Oh shit. I'm I'm like I'm patient. I'm yeah. just waiting. It's me, yeah. him, and uh Jug Harden. But that's how it is, man. Yeah. Coming up, like when you see people you came up with, so like it's fire. When I, the people I came up with, right? So um I grew up with this kid named Aaron Parker, man. Mm-hmm. Oh, I remember I played with this country artist, bro. Played football with this dude, man. We we came up since third grade, man. And I remember like being deployed and seeing this video of him on tour. Yeah. In Tennessee. Flipped the camera around, sold out show, Nashville Field. I mean, it just sold out. Mm-hmm. And me and him would drink beer on the porch and play guitar. Right. You know what I mean? It's Alabama, it's right? Chilling. So it's, yeah. And we out there drinking natty ices and playing, right. you know, playing guitar, singing country songs. Yeah. And shit. You know what I mean? Um, so it's always good to see other people that you know, you came in. I still talk. I still chop it up with AP all the time, man. Mm-hmm. Like we, we keep each other grounded every now and then. He's out in Nashville, um, still doing his thing. So, um, you know, it's always good to get that, pick that phone up and be like, "Hey, what's up, man? Like, what you got going? On? Right. I see, I see you moving. Proud of you, but uh, you know, fuck you, man. You know, <laughs> you know like, like, yeah. like next time you come home, man, we need to get some beer. You yeah. Know what I mean, so um, it's always good to see that man. Um, tap in with people that. You know, came up with. for sure, man. For sure, AP. Um, look, man. We got history. We done made history. Yep. We got more history to make. Mm-hmm. Um. Before I leave, we always do gym class. You know what I mean, got to give us something. Get a uh, RWMTM pod fans something that they can take with them in life. It can be music, whatever. What gym you have, or gyms? Yeah. What's your gym that you can give to these people? Never put yourself in a box. Mm. Why Never. is that? You got too much, too much ambition. It's too much in your brain. It's too much in your mind, your mindset for you to box yourself in to just one set of thinking. Right? Mm-hmm. Like the world grows, music grows, people grow, children grow. You know what I mean? When you box yourself in to just one mindset. You only stunt your own growth, right? You know what I mean. So never box yourself. Keep constantly learn. Try to learn something daily. You know what yeah. I mean. There's there's plenty of avenues out there for us to just sit back and take an hour out of the day to just pick up a book, learn mm-hmm. something, man. Like, yeah. How you gonna get better at your craft if you're not willing to do that? Because you think you know it. 
Yeah. Don't put yourself in the box. Don't put yourself in the box. All right. So look, before we get out of here, we got to set the record damn straight right now. Mm-hmm. You, you a mailman from Alabama. Yeah, roll top. You know where I'm from. Mm-hmm. Me and D, we from Michigan, Detroit to be exact. Yeah. We Michigan Wolverine fans. Yeah. People were saying that we ain't want to smoke when they showed the video of us. Uh, who he's gonna play for the state? I, me personally, I don't like playing people when they down. Yeah, but uh, we play y'all. What was that January first? January first, out, out in L.A. Right? Is that L.A.? I think so. Rose Bowl. Rose yeah, Bowl, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pasadena, Pasadena. Mm-hmm. Um, in the heat. In the in the uh, little, January first, probably about seventy warm, degrees. Yeah. About yeah, about seventy degrees. Cause it's snowing in Michigan right now. Yeah, it's snowing. Yeah, so. y'all y'all want to survive up there? Yeah. Um, but yeah. Who you got? Alabama. 27-17. Bro, I'm going to slap that communion cup out your hand. 27-17? I don't think y'all going to put up more than 20. <sighs> Offensive. Bro, I think, personally, I really think we been, we, they, didn't have the, they had our backs against the wall the whole year. Mm-hmm. I think we finally got y'all. We finally you got the so? SEC. Yeah. We, I think so, man, because it's it's a lot of um, and mailman know we we you know we we keep it real. Yeah, yeah, we talk, we talk. You know what I mean? We keep it real when it comes to the sports. Mailman know that if that young man Milroy Milro, mm-hmm. it's Jalen, right? Jalen yeah, Milro. Yeah, I always got a Jalen somewhere. Always. Yeah, Jalen Milro. If that young man can't get that ball in the air, he gonna have to be on his feet a lot. And he he ain't Mike Vick. You know what I mean? He do get up. He's a big dude, though. But we got the number one defense. Yeah. So, I just want to, you know. Uh, hey. I think it's going to be a close game. You said 27-17. I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with 30-24. Mm, that's that's kind of high scoring, man. 30-24. That's high scoring. Yeah, I mean, about, about, about four that's touchdowns. A, that's, a, that's, a, that's a high stress game. Yeah. You know what I mean? Four touchdowns. Either four touchdowns. Or three touchdowns, which would be 21, mm-hmm. and then three field goals. You know what I mean? They get three. Cause I, look, count, I count on us missing a field goal. Extra point. Yeah, that's what, I, that's what I'm saying. But my my dude, automatic. He, that, that boy kicked about. He the, he the, he the uh, leading scorer in Michigan. He, he, he don't miss for real. He like, yeah. Jay, he like uh, Tucker. Yeah. You know what I mean? He, he like 90 plus percent. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? It's going to be interesting, man. But like I said, man, the weather is going on. Um, yeah. That's our weather. But, you know, a lot of a lot of those Cali boys, UCLA, USC, they coming to the Big Ten next year. So, you know, we already acclimatized to that. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? To that area over there. You know, Jim Harbaugh is a Cali. Yeah, he's a Cali boy. He's a Cali guy. So, you know what I'm saying? Um, Cali, dog. I'm telling you. It's going to be a good game, man. It's going to be a all, great all game. All it's going to take is one good hit. Yeah. Change the whole momentum. Yeah, y'all ain't about to Jadavian Clowney, my boy Blake Corn, <laughs> boy. Nah, y'all ain't about to do that, dog. Shout well, out good. to shout hey. out to Jadavian Clowney because hey. he is Jadavion, on my Ravens. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he he, he make it, he causing havoc like always. He havoc, man. Yeah. All it takes is one good hit from one of them Bama boys, man. That's all it yeah, takes. Yeah, some big boys, some, dog. Some big boys, man. Mm. So. Hogs. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, dog. Like I like always, man. This is relationships worth more than money. Yeah, yeah. S, bro, I appreciate you for driving up. From Norfolk to come, come, come! Holler at your boy, man, and, yeah, and get on this podcast, man. We about to do numbers with this one. Oh yeah, because it's, it's very informative. Um, you know, rolling back there. Well, shouts um, out, rolling, man. Shouts out, rolling. Happy shout birthday rolling. to Happy my bro. Man. His birthday was Friday. He yeah. just turned um forty seven, and um <laughs> yeah, he just turned forty seven, man, yeah, and um man. yeah. He, he, getting up there, man. He's no getting up. grades. I got more grades. Than yeah, him. man. He ain't got no grades. That no shit grades. crazy, man. I, just, I turned man, 32. Man. Yeah, like, 47, damn. man. <laughs> he 47, but look, 32. He ain't got no grades in his no beard. Grades, like, you know what I'm saying? This shit crazy. That's that just for men? Yeah, man. Yeah. He got that He got that just for man <laughs> in that joint. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. That's that new brand. Okay, yeah, younger, than younger than y'all. But like that, man, this is Relationship Worth More Than Money podcast. And uh, we go. Relationship worth more than money. Podcast. I'm talking relationships worth more than money. No time for the fig or the phony.